Welcome to the 320 Podcast, where we encourage you to reach for the immeasurably more life with Christ. From discussions on scripture, to poetic messages, to dreaming big with Jesus, you will enjoy a variety of episodes brought to you by Shelley Wilson Ministries. To find out more about Shelley Wilson Ministries and the many resources available to you, please visit our website at www.shellywilsonministries.org. Hey guys, it's Shelley Wilson. Welcome to this week's 320 Podcast. I actually want to share with you today something that I just wrote. I've not posted on social media yet. Um, It just came into my heart. That's kind of God's way with me when it comes to writing. And I heard the first two lines coming, came into our middle room here at the ministry building to, to begin to type out what I was hearing. And I want to share it with you and then talk about it a little bit. It's called Divinely Marked. And it says, People come and go. And all good things must end. But if Christ is your king, then all is left to him. When seems the rain has stalled, praise him in the hall. For the very ancient of days keeps us in his palm. Fear not what lies ahead. He is the very light that shines upon your feet and knows the time of flight. If surrendered we truly are, then settle our dear hearts. We're safe in his kind arms every step divinely marked now listen there's so much scripture paraphrased in that little poem of course god is so good at bringing his word back into the light even in a poetic form or a paraphrased form so we might could understand it a little bit more kind of like when jesus used parables to talk to the fishermen and the industry people of that day because he knew what they needed to hear to understand and my prayer to you for you today is that this is a language you can understand as well and so as always message me if it was for you because it sure encourages me too um, <clears throat> I've learned over my 20 something years in ministry that uh, a lot of things I've, I've learned mostly what not to do and, and I'm I'm pretty honest about that uh, I'm, I'm still learning what to do when to do it how to do it and those kind of things and I and because we release dreamers into their destinies or we we try to walk alongside women who are looking for that which God has placed in them it can be a real frustrating process and if you are not rooted in the Word of God to know his nature his ways um, you know the thing how he does things at times what is not him you and I can be number one deceived or we can be walked into something that is not of God uh so you know when I'm going to go here just because this is going to you know maybe be two writings in one today which I know is odd but it's just coming to my mind so strongly we were in boundaries class the other night and Debbie our teacher said something about belonging and as soon as she said that word I knew I had just written the day before a message called belonging but I completely forgot about it I never posted it on Facebook or anything so in that moment I knew I was to read that writing to the group in our boundaries class and that it was going to be a significant uh, moment for them Uh, so let me read it to you and then let's see if God will maybe merge the two writings between divinely marked and belonging okay the belonging one starts like this it says some of us are so addicted to belonging that we take whoever accepts us first i've been there and it's a dangerous place to be yet jesus is so into a life of being set apart belonging can't be your boss or you will end up in circles where you'll have to compromise who you are in christ just to belong you'll settle for an i'm gonna be like them life instead of an i'm a uniquely made masterpiece kind of life Your belonging membership card will keep you bound to whatever circle owns you. A misplaced need for belonging will draw you to unhealthy and toxic needs, abusive places and spaces, spiritual merry-go-rounds that make your head spin. Truth will likely not be rooted deep because your belonging is a heart need, not a kingdom need. We can all talk about this even in our church circles, but if belonging becomes a heavyweight need, you'll stay when that church teaches error. 
You'll stay when that church shifts into deception. You'll stay because belonging was more important than following Jesus. And much to our surprise in our current day teachings, many of those same Jesus disciples we read about followed him alone, or at least with just a few. You didn't see John the Baptist pulling a grand circle of friends with him. He walked out of that wilderness alone, but on a mission. You didn't see Elijah and Elijah surrounded by allies, and you didn't see Jesus often with huge crowds unless they merely wanted a need met. When he began to explain what it really took to follow him, more people left than stayed. I won't be that girl that promises you a tribe that walks in this Jesus life with you because it is very often just not that way. It is the cost of following Jesus to be set apart in ways of aloneness in some seasons. And in those times where I do find a sort of crowd running together, I watch and I wait. It might be a bit like a gypsy tribe, always carrying a personal agenda rather than a kingdom agenda, peddlers with a purpose. And if you'll stand back and quietly watch for a while, that agenda usually shows itself. Be so careful that a need to belong does not walk you into a snare of counterfeit circles with wolves in sheep's clothing. So be content and rejoice, dear one, if you do not belong. Know who you are in Christ, so belonging isn't the most important of all things. You belong to Him, and that is the secure and safe place. The truth is, this world is not our home, and following Jesus will call you often to a set-apartness, often spoken of like the Apostle Paul, all of Asia has left me, and yet he followed. So that is the writing um, on belonging, and, and so let's keep that in the back of our mind as we go through the divinely marked writing, which I had just gotten like 10 minutes before I came to record this podcast. We can merge the two because when we see that very often we think the reign of God has stalled in our lives, like the divinely marked piece, the poetry, um, or maybe people have left us, uh, people we loved, we wanted them to stay, we wanted them to, you know, go the full gamut with us when it came to Jesus, but they didn't, right? Um, you know, I have learned that people can only leave if they're supposed to, right? And if they were supposed to stay in God's sovereignty, they would have. And um, that's been something pretty hard for me to accept because I'm kind of a girl who likes to have a lot of uh, people with her. I think it's fun. I think it's great to do uh, the work of the kingdom together. But it just is not always like that. And so sometimes when we think things are stalling out for us, we're just in a hallway and, and where this little poem says, praise him in the hall, it's true because the Ancient of Days has this in his palm. Listen, our name is written on his palm. Remember the scripture. We've got to know through the word who he is, what the truth really is. Otherwise, every circumstance will sway us emotionally. In other words, I'll think, oh my gosh, God's never going to use me. You know, because I'm expecting every day something of a grand finale, if you will, and that in 24 hours, I'm going to get where it is God wants me to be. And the truth is, every one of our steps is, or it says he orders the step of the righteous, right? So if I'm following Jesus, and following does mean I'm going somewhere, but it's more than a destination or even the purpose and destiny. It is, I'm following Jesus. I'm following his heart. I'm following into the places and spaces of, of who he is in his word, what his nature is like. Because the truth is, our primary goal is to become more like Christ, right? So we can't be so swept up. And listen, I'm a, I'm a girl who believes in purpose. I believe in fulfilling the ministry God has divinely put us on this earth to fulfill. However, part of that are seasons where we're set aside or set apart from crowds to learn more about him. I, I shared last night in our healing group, there was a number of years that I was very sick. I ended up having to take disability from a job. I could barely get out of bed. Um, I was in chronic pain day and night. They gave me a pill to get up and they gave me a pill to go to sleep, neither of which worked. I would groan if, when I, you know, flipped over in the bed. Even my toes hurt, you know. And I know some of you listening ha understand that kind of chronic pain. But I've gone back to that season 
because uh, God did heal me through a surgery then, I have gone back to that season and, and, and realized that that was like a set-apart time for me. It is where I focused on the Word and prayer. It's where uh, I had visitations from the demonic realm uh, in my sick, while I was sick, you know, coming into my bedroom and, and where God taught me how to memorize Psalm 91 and Ephesians 6. And it's is where I began to apply what I was reading, right? So when something came into my room that was not of God, I was applying the fullness and the power of the name of Jesus. I was quoting the scripture, you know, a thousand will fall at my side and 10,000 at my right hand, Psalm 91, but it will not come near my tent. And another translation says, come near my home. So see, there's a, there is a time in your walk with Jesus when you want so bad to know what it is God wants you to do. And you just want him to give it to you in all honesty. But the truth is sometimes our, our knowledge of him is not yet where it needs to be for him to be able to entrust us with certain things, okay? Listen, there there were so many seasons where I, I, I did wreck things because I'm, I went ahead of God, you know? Uh, and in some ways, I even rationalized that I heard God, but I didn't wait, you know, and I didn't keep praying through. It was just like my own desires, my own heart desires. If I had let my own heart have its desire, I would have been a famous country singer. And and what can I just say, from for now knowing who I am and what I'm called to be, what a waste that would have been for my life, right? It would have been so much smaller than what God had planned for me. So I had to go through seasons that were less about destiny and more about character, more about integrity. You know, it, it's where I learned... <laughs> You know, guys, you go through, there are such little foxes that spoil the vine. I see so many people in ministry who compromise all the time. They compromise in how they dress. They compromise in how they don't pay their bills. They compromise in robbing God, you know, by not giving what he is owed. They compromise uh, by the way they slander other people. They just compromise. And and God knows whether or not we have something in us that needs a little work. We all have something in us and always will that needs a little work. And so I've just learned that if it feels like the rain has kind of stalled out, then okay, I do ask God to check my heart. Is there something he's asked me to do? And I've diso- been disobedient on. Therefore, he won't move me forward. And if that's the case, then I'm going to go do the last thing that he told me to do. But if none of that is the case, and I feel like the reign of heaven has kind of shut up on me, then I know I'm probably about to learn something in the stillness and in the quiet. And in the meantime, I've learned how to praise him in that hallway where I'm not idle, I'm not necessarily doing some things to strive or to try to even spiritually in prayer manipulate God because he is the boss of me. (laughs) I was telling the girls last night, I'm going to get a t-shirt. He's the boss of me. Um, So, you know, the the third stanza of this, and I'm going to post this this poem on the Spotify where y'all can have a copy of this. Um, as the podcast airs. It says, Fear not what lies ahead, because he is the very light that shines upon your feet and knows the time of flight. So Ecclesiastes 3 talks about there's a time uh, for peace. There's a time for war. There's a time to speak and a time to be silent. There is a time for everything under the sun. And the last part of that, you know, it says, uh, he has made everything beautiful in his time, in its time. Okay, there is a divine timing. God has always been a God of timing. Always. We see uh, different things in the scriptures about how he is just the God of time. Time is not a thing for him, right? He just knows he has a heavenly calendar. And on this day, Shelly's going to do this. And on this day, I'm going to put this in motion. And on this day, when he ordered the earth and the world, there was an order to it, a way he did it. He chose it to be that way. Do I know why? No, I sure don't. Because I don't always know the mind of God, right? And I know that God is not like me. He's not so natural that I can know all of his ways. You know, 
Uh, the Bible even says that Jesus did so many things it couldn't even fit in the book. And we get so tripped up on that because we think we're going to understand everything. And if I study the Bible, then I'm going to know everything there is to know about God. And listen, God is unsearchable, Jeremiah uh, you know, says, it, 33.3. It says, you know, he is unsearchable is one translation. That means I can't even really find it, you know. And so um, I just want to encourage you not to be discouraged in the hallway. He says he, he marks divinely. Every step divinely marked is what it says. It's true. Even when I take a wrong step, and, and we were talking about this last night, you can't fear decisions because we do not always get it right. Sometimes I might do something thinking it's the Lord and maybe it wasn't exactly right, but God isn't going to be there to embarrass me. He's not going to be ashamed of me. He's, he is going to take his gentle shepherd, shepherd's hook because he's the good shepherd and he's going to gently move me to the right pathway. And that is why I have to know the word because I have to know the very nature of God or I will take on a vision of him that is inaccurate. When this poetry says that he is the light that shines upon your feet, okay, he's the light of the world. There is no darkness in him is what the scripture says, right? We also know that he really believes that how, how good are the feet that take the gospel? How beautiful are the feet that take the gospel? But I don't just every day go everywhere doing everything because he hasn't really shared that with me. Or told me to do that, right? So I do wait on him to give me direction. To the point of the second writing called The Belonging, I want to touch on that when it comes to almost tucking it in gently with this divinely marked writing. That message is because we have, some of us have so many insecurities or fears. Fears of never getting where God wants us to be. Maybe we fear of, that we're never going to be enough. Uh, we fear of being abandoned because that's been our history, maybe with our parents, maybe with friends, maybe even with church leadership and other people that, that we thought were going to be with us for the long haul, that should have loved us well, and they didn't. And therefore, we take that emotion, that abandonment, that lack of belonging, and we want to belong so bad that even if the circle is bad for us or to us, we stay with them. Or even if a church becomes full of deception and darkness and, and things that are not of God, we continue to stay and rationalize that even with scripture sometimes when, when God is like, listen, you are way more loyal to them than you are to me, right? And you're going to have to choose them or me. And sometimes, guys, it really does get down to that. There are seasons where something's not necessarily bad. But my desire to belong cannot be higher than my desire to follow Jesus. So that whole belonging thing is like a big thing in the church today, especially with us women. Why? Because sometimes women are not nice to each other. If, and we see this all the time. Mean girls grow up to be mean women. We talk about this in boundaries a lot. It's why we speak the truth in love to people. Listen, your behavior is bad. It's not Christ-like at all. And let me just share with you, you know, what it's doing to people. And then maybe repentance comes and they actually change their way. And so, you know, belonging. There's a thousand other things I could touch on. Um, the fear part that this poem talks about the fear of tomorrow, and we talk about that so much in our groups because whether someone's gone through a divorce, the fear of needing a job, the fear of what am I going to do for transportation, the fear that my life is over. But that is so counter to what the Word of God says because the Word says, I have plans and hope and a future for you and an expected end, right? The, the Word also says your, gifts are irre your gift is irrevocable. In other words, everything God wanted you to be is already in you, and he's not going to waste that if you'll turn over every season to him. So I can say in even my bad, bad seasons of storms, they were divinely marked. You know, uh, one of the things a lot of people hate to hear is the sovereignty of God. 
listen, I always believe free will comes into play, but God knew ahead of time because he's God. He knows the past, the present, and the future. He knows who's going to turn to him and who's not. He knows who's going to be disobedient or not. He's full of long-suffering and patience. He expects us to be full of that too because it's who he is. He wishes none to perish. Can I explain all the intricacies of being of God being sovereign yet seeing things go wrong? Yeah, I can say sin is in the world and, and man chooses. He still is given the option to choose. But if I believe Jesus, if I have really surrendered my life to the King, then I can trust that when everything goes wrong, he's still in the middle of it. And that, and we were talking about this last night in group, and I said, listen, if God has not yet healed you, ask him to, to, to show you what he's teaching you in the moment. Um, you know, what is he teaching you in, let's say you lost a job. Okay, trust God to provide a new job. It's probably going to be better than the former, former one because you probably would have le- never left the former one had not he forced it, Right. He's trying to give you something better. But my question has always been, instead of always trying to get out of the hard situations to pray ourselves out of it, can we pray, God, what am I to learn in this season? Because every season brings a teaching that makes us a better uh, follower of Jesus. And honestly, it prepares us for the future. When we look at Joseph in his many years of suffering, He was betrayed by brothers. And I go to this story so much because we forget. Very often, some of us are living a Joseph life. Why? Because God is making a leader out of us. And a leader is never a good leader until they've been through some stuff. I can promise you that. Joseph's pits and prisons were divinely marked. Okay? Every sorrow, sadness painful thing he went through every pit every prison every bit of slander and false accusation was divinely marked and it may it prepared him to become a leader of people right so if you're going through one hellish thing after another you may be a leader right so and this was kind of my story too yet we want We want the divinely marked steps to get to (laughs) where we think we're going. And oftentimes, it's not God's timing. Then we get discouraged. Then we get frustrated. Then we think we're doing something wrong. It's not always the case. Sometimes God is just working on inner things. This is not probably new to some of you who are listening. I've covered some of this on the earliest of podcasts, and it's not often a message we want to hear when they're, when we're in the middle of trying to get to where we're going. And I have been the world's worst, if I'm honest with you, at that very thing. Until, until God is like Shelley, every season carries seed. And that seed has got to be watered. You know, And that garden has got to be tilled and cared for. And I'm birthing something, but every pregnancy carries a nine-month birthing cycle, right? And so I've, I've learned to train my mind to go, okay, I think he's birthing something, which means there's a process here, right? He's growing something. He's growing uh, in, in, in the way of the natural, we're growing a baby with all these organs and complex cells and DNA in all of these beautiful things um, to be able to function on the outside of a mother's womb. And, you know, even that I can almost see in the spirit and go, wow, isn't that just the case for many of us that as your steps are divinely marked, whether you are in the, the belly of a fish like Jonah right now because you are running from the call of God or you just feel like the rain has stopped and heavens has, have shut up on you. And you've tried this and you've tried that and none of it seems to work. My advice to you is just stop for a minute. Just stop the striving. Stop trying to figure it out. Stop trying to get ahead of God. And and, and trust the Holy Spirit to bring the thing to you. You know, that's that's where we go, okay, man, 
I think I've really grown in the Lord because, you know, nothing's so important that I just have to have it except Jesus. And I had to really bring myself to that place of, okay, if this never happens or this never happens and that really ends up not being the will of God for me and it was my own heart desire, is that going to be okay with me? Is that is that going to uh, turn me from God? Am I going to accuse him of not being faithful at that point? Because it really just shows that I haven't surrendered my life to Jesus for real, right? I want to be the boss of him instead of him being the boss of me. And so, you know, to encourage you to praise in the hallway when everything seems quiet from God, he's never idle. He's always working things out in hiddenness very often. But the birthing does come forward. He's got to take care of of our heart pains, our soul wounds, things that have happened in our lives that have tainted our view of him. All of that has to be done along the way. It's all part of the journey. And um, I had had one day where I, I thought God was giving me a poem, and I just wrote a really quick, short book called The Day I Lost My Song. And um, it was like God, God, it was to me first where God said, Shelly, this is what you've been through the last 10 years, but he gave it to me in parable form. And you know what? Maybe I'll read that to you next week. Okay. Just like a little story session and talk about it because I, I had a vision I saw the story play out in my mind's eye. In in the spirit, I saw myself running to the cave to be comforted by the Holy Spirit. And then, then God sending me back out for another training. And then I would come back with new lessons. And then I would want to stay in that cave because, you know, that cave was safe for me. And it was void of people. It was just me and the Lord. And And then he would send me back out even when I didn't want to go because he needed me to face some giants in my life that I honestly didn't want to face. I wanted to skip over that whole need and go right to my destiny and purpose. But you know, by the end of the parable, I realized that what I gained in the 10-year period of pain, of PTSD, of abandonment, of grief, of sadness and sorrow were songs that I could have never written without the season. You know, uh, there were trainings and things in the spirit realm he had to teach me because I was not raised in that type of environment. So I had no real understanding of it. I was more than anything scared of it all. And so, you know, yeah, maybe I'll read that to y'all next week. But all of these things are part of our divinely marked story, okay? So I don't want you to get uh, discouraged on your journey. I just want you to take every day as it comes. Don't do what I did early on where I just stressed over everything because, see, I wanted to control it all, and I I had a good imagination. I have a great work, work ethic, and I can make a lot of things happen and did, but a lot of it wasn't God at all. And it wore me out and it made me tired. And now at 52, I'm like, oh, bless the Lord. I really don't have to make a thing happen. All I have to do is seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And then his word says all these things will happen. Okay, so I'm just going to leave you with that thought. I'm going to quickly pray over you guys. I pray, God, that every listener today gleans some sweet pearl from this message Uh, It was certainly a message not expected for today, Lord, but Holy Spirit, you are the boss of me. You really are. Lord, I, I pray that there is a calm that settles over the listeners, that they can go, you know what? It's okay to let go of things. It's okay to let God be in control. It's okay that I don't know what I'm doing or where I'm going, but he knows what I'm doing and where he knows what he's doing and where he's going. And my job is just to follow him. Lord, I'm asking for that to be, become a revelation in Jesus' name to every heart. That it's not just a mind, intellectual thing, a knowledge thing, but it drops all the way into the heart, into the spirit. Father, even during this time, if, if you're in a, 
a time of the upper room waiting with some that we've had in our rooms desiring so much for the baptism of the Holy Ghost, then in Jesus' name, Father, I'm asking you that even through the the phone screen, the computer screen, however they're listening to the podcast, that in Jesus' name, the very promise of the gift you gave in the upper room to those disciples, both men and women, and who all was in there, that power of God that came down and clothed them with power. And then they were sent out into the world to become bold witnesses. If it's a tarrying season, Lord, then in Jesus' name, let the fire fall on them now. Let them rise with other tongues as evidence of that baptism of the Holy Spirit. Let there be a prophetic wind that drops into the Spirit as you disperse your gifts that you desire to give each every single one of them. Lord, I ask you to bless them with your presence. I ask you, God, to strip them of theologies that are not of you and to rebuild their theology foundation to be strong and a firm foundation and a house built on the rock and not the sand. Lord, I bless you that your word is true, that you have divinely marked every one of their lives. And I pray for peace over them, Lord. That they don't have to strive, they don't have to make things happen, but that you would constantly whisper reassurance to them, Lord, in the night through your word. That you would deal with their secret fears, even their hidden sin, with their desire to do things apart from you, God, that you would break that off of them in Jesus' name. I pray that every demonic assault that has been sent to discourage them now fall off of their life. Every generational Every generational devil that has just been coming through the ranks for many, many years, many generations, sent to that family line to halt them. Right now, I cancel that assignment and I say, you are now finished and evicted. Lord, I bless you that you have hope and a future and expected end for every single life. And I wait to hear the good report, Lord. I thank you for every ear that hears today. Let it be, let it be exactly as you want it to be, Lord. And we bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, girls and guys, I'll catch you next week. All right, love y'all. We hope today's episode has blessed you and encouraged you to pursue Christ passionately. To join us again for more encouragement, equipping, and empowering, subscribe to the 320 Podcast. We would also like to invite you to enjoy our round-the-clock radio station, Royalty For Real Radio for Women, at royaltyforreal.com. That's royalty, the number four, real.com.